Hello and welcome to another video. I'm uh, just running through a mod question which uh, I put up in the extension class last week. Um, I don't know if many people got around to do it. I think somebody actually said they did it, which I found very impressive. Uh, it's not an easy question by any means. Um, so let's have a look at it. It's a short question. <laughs> uh, so find a cubic polynomial with integer coefficients such that when a, b and c, uh, when given a, b and c, the following and the real numbers, the following results hold. The sum of it is 2, the sum of the squares is also 2. Um, and we want to make sure that for this cubic polynomial, we have f of a equals f of b equals f of c when those two conditions hold. Okay, so first thing I'm thinking in a question like this is it sounds like it's probably going to be something to do with roots of polynomials, just because that's the topic where you do find cubic polynomials, where they do things with alpha, beta, gamma, but they're just using a, b and c here. Now, that's not entirely true though, is it? Because they didn't say this equaled zero. And when it equals zero, I, obviously I can say, ah, oh, so a, b and c are the roots, and I can start applying my tricks. But it feels like it should be something to do like that with that, doesn't it? So what I thought first for this question was I thought, well, you know, I'd rather be looking for the roots. So let me just point out that what we're solving here, oh, <laughs> dodgy diagram again, um, is for some cubic polynomial, yeah, maybe it looks something like that, there will be a point on here, like, let's call it f of a, but it could also be, of course, f of b or f of c. In fact, let's just call it k. <laughs> yeah, there'll be a point on here such that the values a, b and c all satisfy that. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'll get a picture of what's going on first. Yeah. Now, what else do we know? We know that, I guess, these numbers are going to be like probably less than 1, aren't they? Because they add up to, to um, 2 altogether. So, you know, maybe 1's there, maybe 1's there. I don't know, yeah? But, but like, 1's basically down the bottom of this diagram. It doesn't really, it's not really particularly helpful, but I just thought, get a clearer picture of it just from these results. But we're trying to solve that. Now, surely, though, I can just move this diagram down so I'm actually solving the roots of a different cubic, yeah? Let's call this cubic um, something like, h of x. I'm trying to draw it so it's just been moved down. It's supposed to be parallel in the gradient sense <laughs> to the one above it. As in it's got the same derivative because it will just have a different number on the m which moves it up and down the y-axis. So that's what I'm kind of thinking. I'm thinking maybe if I could just like kind of move this all the way down to here, yeah, and then I'll be on moving from this, you know, this one down to here, if you see what I mean. And so this is actually going to be just, well, we can all see here that the roots for this one, if the roots are a, b, and c, then that's obviously going to be the number minus a, b, c. Yeah, that's the case whenever you've got a cubic in that situation, think just about like, I don't know, x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3. Where does it hit the y-axis? It hits the y-axis at negative 6. Yeah, um, and that's just because when x is zero, you get that times that times that, and that's you know one, two, and three. See the relationship? That's minus a, b, c, and so like these distances are going to be exactly the same. How I move from there down to there is going to be exactly how I move from here down to this one here. If you see the symmetry behind it, it's not very clear on my diagram, I admit. But um, if that's going to move down, you know, if, if this point's going to move down here, then this one needs to move down here. And it'll be down at minus a, b, c. Okay, so let's give these names. This one's y equals f of x, and this one's obviously y equals f of x minus k, or minus a, b, c, if you like. And so, in fact, let's call it, to give it a different color as well, y equals h of x. And then let's just note that h of x is equal to f of x moved down k, yeah? But let's also point out that k actually equals, like, a, b, c, yeah? <laughs> Okay, so, cool. Right, what we're going to do then? We're going to, as um, obviously f of a, f of b, f of c, if I plug that in, I get 0. We need to solve, yeah, h of x equals 0. And so we know h of a equals h of b equals h of c equals 0, yeah? In other words, we know that all of these, you know, have a y value of 0. <laughs> you know? And now we can say, great. <laughs> Great. Now A, B, and C are the roots. 
and we can start using roots of polynomial ideas. <laughs> now we already know, I hope you know this notation because it just like, speeds things up a bit, that the sum of alpha, which is obviously alpha plus beta plus gamma, how it's normally written down when you do roots of polynomials is like that, but we're dealing with a, b and c. So if you like the sum of alpha here is just a plus b plus c and we know that that's 2. Great, yeah, remember that's like your minus, well let's, not, well, let's call it ax cubed a a cubed a x cubed if you've got a cubic like this and i'm having you to use capital letters because i'm al already using lowercase letters and i don't want co any confusion but then the sum of the roots is minus b over a the su sum of the product pairs is c over a and the product i should just write it down as alpha beta gamma is minus d over a So I'm just going to use those ideas now. Um, now, I know they've only given me the squares, but everybody knows that when you do a plus b plus c squared, you get a squared plus b squared plus c squared, but you also get 2ab plus bc plus ca. You're also going to get that. Draw a little grid out and make sure you understand why that is the case, you know, if you if you need to. Uh, but you want to get quicker and slicker with those. Sorry, that's some terrible handwriting tonight. Okay, so we got that, and that means we can deduce, as we know this is 2, so that's 2 squared. We also know that that's 2 uh, from the result they gave us at the start, so we can now work out what the sum of the product pairs is, because that's what we're looking for, C, A, A, C, whatever. Okay, so we got 4 minus 2 is 2, divided by 2 it's 1, A, B plus B, C plus C, A, and remember that that is your sum of alpha beta. Okay, brilliant. Now we just need the product. Now, we've got these two values. Have we also not already got the product that ABC is K? Okay, great. So let's actually do it. And let's just write down our results now using these uh, rules of uh, roots of polynomials. Um, if we set a equal to 1, try it, you know, we can always times it by a number to make it, uh, you know, integers later. Let a equal 1, we're going to have x cubed minus, uh, now b, you know, we've got minus 2 here, haven't we? Because the sum of these is, you know, if you've got this is equal to 2, this is equal to 1, and so if a is 1, b is minus 2, and so we're going to have minus 2x squared. Let me put this down here. And uh, if, uh, what have we got next? If a is 1 here, you're going to get c equals 1. And so that's just going to be plus x. And then if a equals 1 over here, you're going to get, we already know that this is ABC, so you're going to get minus ABC for your D. Yeah, so minus ABC. Cool. Now that is our H of X function. Yeah, that is our cubic function here, Y equals H of X and 1 of the roots. All we've got to remember now is that H of X equals F of X minus K. And so we can see here, because k is abc, we're just going to have the abcs cancel, yeah? And you're going to have x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus abc equals f of x minus abc, because it's f of x we're looking for. This was my way of thinking about it as well. If you've had a much clearer way of thinking about it than me, good for you. But that was how I bumbled through that one. I was slightly nervous that it wasn't uh, necessarily the roots of uh, the x-axis, so I just wanted to make sure everything made sense to me. But uh, yeah, that's a tough question, that question. Uh, I'm now going to switch to another one I put on uh, the 2011 paper, question two. But um, yeah, I'll do a separate video for that. Bye-bye.